It's happened. The Sims apocalypse is here and society has collapsed. What caused this tragedy is unclear. Maybe the mother plant has blossomed and spread her spores across the globe after a failed Strangerville campaign. Perhaps after years of mysterious abductions and living and hiding among us, the aliens are finally launching a full-blown invasion. Maybe tensions between vampires, werewolves, and spellcasters have bubbled over into a supernatural war that has caused human sims to go into hiding. Or maybe it's something else entirely. You tell me. Regardless of what caused it, your sims need to find a safe place to ride things out and fast. Thankfully for you, I've built the ideal fallout shelter for your sims to start to recoup and rebuild. I can't seem to get enough of communal living lots, so instead of just doing your typical bunker, I made an entire bunker community. The majority of this build is underground to keep it safe from whatever mayhem is happening on the surface. But I didn't want this place to feel too claustrophobic or depressing as bunkers tend to be, so I made sure we had as much natural light as possible. There are two courtyards that this place is built around, and in order to let the light in, I deleted the ceilings, built a thin strip of glass roofing on either side of it, then extended the eaves to cover that opening. To make it look a bit sturdier, I used more roofing with the reclaimed sheet metal texture as a border. This little structure at the front here is where the main stairwell down is. I used rounded roofing here to make this look like one of those curved airplane hangers that's been repurposed. Repurposed items is a big thing throughout this build because you have to make do with what you've got at the end of the world. So there's plenty of rusty metal, cement, worn wood, and upcycled items. I know it's been a few weeks since my last video, but I've been busy and this was a huge build. I did warn you that I am not always consistent and we're all just gonna have to be okay with that, alright? I feel like I'm running behind on everything in life lately, so I do not know why I chose to undertake such a long build right now. I just get a spark of inspiration and go with it without pausing to think things through. I am also terrible at accurately judging how long it's going to take me to do something. So yeah, it's a bad combination that gets me in way over my head. Sure, a huge apocalypse community would be a cool idea, Liz, but that's going to take you forever to build. And then you're going to have to edit all that footage. And then you're going to have to try to find stuff to talk about during the video when you hate talking. I did this to myself, so I can't blame anybody but myself, but it's okay. I did it, and it is a pretty cool spot. But yeah, since this is a huge build, I cut out a bunch of stuff, as per usual, but I'll be sure to show off anything you may have missed in the tour at the end. This place can house a bunch of sims and has pretty much everything they could need to be self-sufficient at the end of the world. There's space for farming, food processing, crafting, recycling, water production, researching, recreation, and more. We'll go through all the amenities over time, but first up is the kitchen. There is just one kitchen for the whole place, so I made it nice and big so it'll be easy to prepare lots of food for everyone. This place can sleep at least 8 sims, as is, but if you swap in some bunk beds, you could easily sleep 16 to 24 sims just by changing up the bedroom furniture. So yeah, you're going to be cooking in this kitchen a ton to feed all those mouths. In the kitchen, I added in two different trash cans, one for compost and one for trash compacting. Managing waste well would be a very important task in a community like this, so having the different types of bins is my nod to that. I also gave this place the reduce and recycle lot challenge, so you'll have to actually manage the garbage on this lot. I went with a mixture of modern, industrial, and reclaimed or found objects in this kitchen as well as in the rest of the build. Incorporated some natural woods to soften up all the sturdy cement and metal everywhere. To offset the dark, drab vibes you can get in a place like this, I added in plenty of pops of color. The colors I chose are a bit muted though, so they're fun but still fit in somewhat with the apocalyptic vibes. Speaking of challenges, this lot would be a great opportunity to create your own apocalypse gameplay challenge. I figured since I built this on the island in Winnenberg, you could completely empty that whole island except for this bunker and have your sims live off the land here. Maybe on some of the other empty lots on this island, you could put some special places for them to scavenge for items, complete different tasks, or recruit other volunteers. I only made six sims for this lot, so maybe after they accomplish a certain goal, then you could find a new survivor to add to the community and unlock new items. I don't have fully fleshed out challenge rules in mind, but there's definitely something here. Let me know what doomsday gameplay ideas you have for this place in the comments. This room attached to the kitchen is the pantry. Having plenty of properly stored and preserved food would be essential in an emergency long-term shelter. So I made a really big pantry and nectar cellar here. 
added in a large island too, so that there's plenty of space for canning and drying and other food preservation stuff that can be done in here so that it's not taking up precious counter space in the kitchen. Continuing with the food preservation theme, the next room over is the sort of fermentation area. In here, there's a juice fizzing station and a nectar making barrel. I'd really love it if we had more food preservation items in the game, like a dehydrator, a smoker, fermenting jars, etc. We have a decent amount already, but I'm a big foodie, so I'm always going to want more options in my game. I know there are some modders out there that have created some of this stuff. I think Brazen Lotus has a bunch of food and crop mods, but I haven't tested any of them out yet. If y'all have any other recommendations, definitely let me know. I've been itching to do some homesteading, self-sufficiency gameplay in The Sims, and maybe downloading some good mods will finally get me to do that. On the other side of the kitchen is the communal dining room. I know you can only have eight Sims in a household normally, but I really see this place thriving when there's even more Sims living here. So I gave this room a gigantic dining table to suit that. If you don't have mods that allow you to increase your max household size, to get more Sims in here, you could rent out some of the bedrooms to roommates if you have university or tenants if you have for rent. I don't have for rent and the bedrooms are really basic, so I'm not sure how well they'll do with tenants but if you test it out, let me know. Speaking of the new pack, y'all, they got me. I've held off on buying any new packs for so long, but they hooked me with that end of the year sale. I really wanted to get four rent and werewolves, but I wasn't able to bundle the new pack, so I ended up combining werewolves with horse ranch. Both these have tons of really good worn-in swatches on items and living off the land vibes, so they're perfect for an apocalypse build like this, and I couldn't resist getting them. Not a financially responsible choice, but it's been a year already and sometimes you just need to treat yourself to little joys. Plus, I know I'll get plenty of use out of these packs. Since we're on the topic of grasping for small joys and being irresponsible with my time and money, let's chat about Neopets. I am fully back into playing Neopets again. I played so much when I was a kid and had been nostalgic about it and wondering if it was still a thing for a while. Then I discovered that it is in fact still around when I saw the Amanda Files playing it a while ago and now I'm hooked. I have been starting off every morning, hopping online and playing my little Neopets dailies. And is it enough? But that's not all. I've gotten so invested that I have a second account. You may be thinking, okay, that's a step further, but totally fine. But wait, I've now spent real life money on this children's game multiple times. Yeah, we're in dangerous territory now. So please, if any of you are also a grown ass adult who's fully in some sort of childhood regression stage, let me know in the comments and help me feel better about whatever the hell I'm going through right now. Not that there's anything wrong with liking stereotypically childish things, I've been about that forever, but I seem to be doubling down on it lately. Like I bought a Neopets t-shirt and a set of Studio Ghibli jewelry, the stretchy plastic bead little kid looking shit from Hot Topic recently. Yeah, tell me I'm normal, please. Okay, that is enough spiraling for now, let's get back to the build. On the side of the building opposite the kitchen, there are a few crafting rooms. The one in the corner we just saw was for woodworking and candle making, both of which are skills your sims will likely be using frequently during the apocalypse. This yellow room is the arts and crafts studio. The desk and shelves on the left, I'm pretending is a sewing and fiber crafts area. Sewing and repairing clothes, as well as knitting, would also be really good skills to have when you just can't go out and buy new stuff at the store. Then on the back wall, there's a painting area. This would pretty much just be a creative outlet for keeping people occupied during their time down in the bunker. Incorporating both practical as well as entertainment areas in this build was a priority. I want your sims to have plenty of fun things to do here to keep them from going stir crazy and make living through the end times a little more bearable. The next space over is the playroom slash classroom. Schools are not running in this reality and the adult sims will have lots of work to do running the bunker and going out on supply runs. So having a good place to keep the kids occupied will be important. 
This space has plenty of toys and activities to keep your young ones entertained and out of everyone's hair. I also set up a desk and a reading corner so that they can use this as a makeshift classroom. There's a scout board in here too, not because there's likely any active scouting troops, but because earning the different badges could serve as a sort of apocalypse life skills class all the kids have to go through. All those chalk decals from werewolves made perfect wall decor down here. They just seem like something people living here eventually drew on the walls with whatever materials they had lying around to make the place feel more homey. Next to the playroom is a music room. There's a piano, guitar, violin, and microphone in here. This room is pretty much solely an entertainment space for people to unwind and practice a hobby during their free time. I made sure to put this room and the playroom far away from the bedrooms and any other quiet spaces so that these noisy areas are confined to one area of the bunker. In the center courtyard, we have the farming spaces. The right side is for the animals and the left side is for the crops. The room separating the two areas is this bunker's makeshift barn. Now, I put in a horse bed, but I do not expect you to keep horses down here. I figured you could raise some goats and maybe sheep though for milk and wool. I only just got the horse ranch pack and have only built this one lot with it, so I do not know how practical this would be in practice, but it makes sense in theory. In their little pasture area, I put in a few prairie grass patches and a milking station in the corner. There's a couple milk pails and a chest I'm pretending is an ice chest and a stool you can sit and milk at while the goat is tethered to the railing. It's not functional, but it looks cute. I also stuck a chicken coop down here as they'd be one of the most useful farm animals to keep in this doomsday situation. IRL, they'd give you multiple sources of protein, feathers, and lots of good fertilizer. You're just getting eggs from them in The Sims, but they're still great to have. The other courtyard has the garden. It is a combination of the garden beds from werewolves and the ones you could craft on the woodworking bench. Depending on the doomsday scenario you're going with here, the soil in the ground may be contaminated. So using raised beds that are filled with compost from the livestock, kitchen scraps, and woodworking shavings would be a great workaround. In the garden, I put in a couple of bug hotels. These will be useful for both another protein source as well as a way to manage waste. I didn't make any of the toilets in this build composting, but if you want that extra challenge, I think that'd be a great realistic upgrade to make. I also did not add in any crops into the garden beds. I think making your sim scavenge the world for seeds to plant would be fun gameplay to do here. Up against the wall of the barn, there's a few vertical planters. These again would be useful if the soil isn't hospitable, but they could also be a good spot to plant soybeans to use for candles. If you really want to make your sim suffer by adding the off the grid lot challenge, you're going to need heaps of candles. Moving upstairs, there's a research lab off the medical room in the corner here. I cut out the med room, but I'll be sure to give you a look at that in the tour later. A science lab is going to be useful in pretty much every apocalypse scenario, so we had to have one here. What they're researching is totally up to you. They could be testing soil and water samples for contamination, breeding new, hardier plants, finding cures for diseases or supernatural forms, researching alien life, or anything else that suits your flavor of Sims Doomsday. Rangerville and Get to Work were really the stars of this room. I don't hear either of those packs getting much love from the community, but I really like them both. Get to Work has tons of great community lot items. Being someone who loves making community lots, I use those items frequently. Strangerville has so much good, grungy, quirky stuff that's perfect for making weird, non-traditional builds, which is right up my alley. I also adore anything that has to do with aliens, so even though the gameplay in that pack isn't amazing, I still love it. So in here, there's a couple of science lab machines to work on, as well as one of those research and debate processors from university. There's a whole separate computer room, and I wanted there to be as many different activities on this lot as I can manage, so I figured why not add that thing on the desk here for more variety. Most likely, the scientists are gonna be working almost around the clock, so I made sure to give them a coffee machine.
the next space over is the tech room. There's a computer in here for hacking and researching and whatever else tech people do in doomsday movies. Some of these non-functional electronics are probably for running and monitoring different systems in the bunker. I also put in the listening device from Strangerville because it looks like the perfect computer for this type of situation. You can pretend to have your sims listen in on secret radio frequencies, put out distress calls, or do whatever other shady conspiracy stuff they want. On one of the desks, I added in the espionage map you get as a reward from the criminal career. I thought this space could also serve as a good spot for planning out different resource trips or tactical campaigns. Moving to the left, the next room is a workshop and recycling area. This is slightly different from the woodworking shop as this one is for more of the techie things. So this is where your sims go to recycle junk into bits and pieces to turn into usable stuff. Besides the recycling machine, there's also a robotic station and a fabrication machine in here. I put in the drafting table looking desk from Dream Home Decorator 2 as it seemed to be a good fit for this type of space. This is probably where your former architects, engineers, and mechanics are going to be spending their time tinkering away. The other half of this upper level has the living quarters. The first area we'll work on is the rec room. On one end there is a sitting area with a TV and on the other is a foosball table. I imagine living in a bunker community like this, especially during a time of emergency, would be pretty taxing. So having a chill spot to hang out and have some fun at the end of the day would be really important. Nothing's really high tech in here and everything's a bit beat up and old, but that's kind of an endearing thing about a space like this. It's all about unwinding with your pals more than anything, and you can do that a lot more easily when you're not worried about staining or scuffing something up a little. To enhance the calming vibes even more, I painted all the rooms in the living quarters that soft robin's egg blue color. Putting in those bins and crates from Batu here and there added in that finishing touch that really helped sell this place as a bunker and not just someone's basement rec room. Next we're moving on to the bedrooms. There are 8 total that all have the same single bed and dresser. This first room is for Maribel and Cody. Maribel is a teen who's taking care of her little brother after their parents died. Maribel is a bookworm and a foodie who loves gardening. If she's not digging in the garden or cooking up a storm in the kitchen, you can find her in the playroom with her brother. Cody is a clingy toddler, and he's never very far from his big sister's side. I tried to make their room as cozy as I could by adding in plenty of plants, warm colors, and personalized pictures on the walls. Next to them is Kyra's room. They're adventurous, childish, and a recycled disciple. Kyra loves collecting things, and when she's not on the surface going on a supply run, you can find her tinkering away in the recycling area. Her room has a cool, modern vibe going on, and I add in plenty of knickknacks she's collected over time. If I were in this sort of situation, this is probably what my room would look like. Not the cool tones and modern aesthetics so much as the random found objects everywhere. I have always loved collecting all sorts of little things, so I relate to this room in that way, though mine would have warmer colors and be much messier. As someone who loves collecting things, surprisingly, I've never completed all the different collections in The Sims. I should definitely add that to my to-do list. Have any of you done this? If so, what collection is the hardest to complete in your opinion? The last bedroom I'm decorating on this wing belongs to Will. He's a loner who prefers the company of animals to people. Same here, Will. Same here. As you probably guessed, he's our rancher who cares for the goats and chickens. He also likes to write and cook. Since he pretty much lives in the barn area and cooks a lot, I imagine he's good friends with Maribel and helps her out in the garden a lot. He's not much of a talker while Maribel has more of a bubbly personality, but he's a good listener and doesn't seem to mind all her questions. I see him as a sort of stoic yet kind uncle figure for Maribel and Cody. The first room on the opposite wing, next to the library, is Hawks. He's a non-committal, paranoid maker. Sort of that standoffish, artsy type. He's not the friendliest at first and takes his work too seriously, but he's a good guy deep down. You can find him spending most of his time in the art room painting or in the recycle room fabricating impeccable furniture and decor pieces. His time spent in the recycling room probably has made him and Kyra fairly close. Their fun nature helps balance out his seriousness. He 
keeps his room pretty tidy and simple. Just some good art and a few functional pieces and that's about all he wants. The last room I decorated belongs to Kinsley. She's the group's likable yet slightly overbearing camping lesbian. Kinsley is active, erratic, and an outdoor enthusiast. When she's not leading the charge on the next service expedition, she can be found stomping fruit into wine or fizzing up a batch of kombucha in the fermentation room. In her room, I included items that looked like she could have either found them on one of her expeditions or crafted them herself. If the world hadn't gone to shit, I could definitely see her living in a log cabin by a lake and working at a general store in a tiny town where she knows everyone and their mother. The remaining three bedrooms I left as blank slates. I thought it would be kind of neat to slowly add new survivors over time. Then you can customize the rooms to suit them as they move in. That's all the main stuff for the interior. Let's go back to the surface to work on the exterior. Your sims aren't likely going to be spending a whole lot of time up here, so I didn't do a ton of stuff, but I did add in a few things that made sense. You're going to need your own sources of power and water, so there's a couple of wind turbines, solar panels, and dew collectors out here. For all the trash that can't be composted or recycled, I added in a burn pit using the bonfire with the junk in it from werewolves. That shipping container inside the fence is where the second staircase is. This way you can do all the stuff within this secured perimeter without going outside of the compound. At the main entrance, there's a few warning signs and a heavily secured bunker door, so nobody's getting in without permission. There's also a supply pile to the right of the hangar for temporarily holding extra stores of wood and supplies collected from resource runs. I didn't want the outside space to be only for business, so I put in a telescope, a grill and picnic table, as well as some chairs around the bonfire. After I get these items all placed properly, I just go through and add in some landscaping to really make this place feel overgrown. But let's just skip all that and jump right into the tour. Here is our finished Sims Apocalypse Bunker Community. Even though it's probably the least amount of landscaping I've done for a lot, it really helps tie the place together and sell it as a desolate doomsday build. The security fence holds all of our surface level essentials for running a self-sufficient bunker. All our power and water collectors are up here, along with a few recreational spaces for getting some much needed fresh air. Inside our secured entrance here, there is a few things that you may be needing before heading out on excursions. There's a few supply crates and a tactical map to reference. Downstairs, before you can even get into the main parts of the bunker, you have to go through a decontamination shower. At the end is a locker room for changing into sterile clothes. The most important thing to access after coming down if there's been an emergency would probably be medical care, so I put the med room directly off the stairwell. The only functional thing in here is the computer pretty much, but this is a must have for any serious fallout shelter. Next to it is the science lab, so your sims can work on putting an end to whatever doom has befallen the sims universe. On the end here is the tech room for monitoring and plotting and doing tech people stuff. I don't know, I'm not good with technology, but I'm sure there's important stuff to do in here. In the corner is the recycling and fabrication room. You can build robots in here too, though if they're the cause of this apocalypse, maybe hold off on that. A room you didn't get to see in the speed belt section is this water treatment plant. Like the med room, it's mostly for aesthetics, but it would be a really important area to have and looks pretty damn cool if I do say so myself. This half of the upper level is the living quarters. We just watched the bedrooms come together, so we'll skip over those. In total, there are four bathrooms plus the decontamination showers, so you'll be all set regardless of how many sims you have living here. This end has the rec space and attached to it is the library, which you didn't get to see before, so here it is now. Just a small spot to enjoy some peace and quiet. Moving to the lower level, this half is the food prep and storage area. We've got a huge pantry with a wine cellar and a spacious kitchen. The fermentation room is in this section of the build, as well as the dining room complete with a bar. If you've survived the apocalypse, you at least deserve a drink. Another room that got cut was this little potting shed thing. All the gardening supplies are in here along with a flower arranging bench. Right out the door is the garden, which has plenty of space for all sorts of crops. The other half of this courtyard is for the animals. The goats have a very spacious barn and the chickens have quite a nice coop too. Another room that got cut was this gym. Your sims have got to be ready for whatever the end of the world throws at them, so this gym will help them train up, whether that's chopping wood or fighting the mother plant. Speaking of wood, next up is the woodworking and candle making room. Next to that is the arts and crafts studio. These yellow rooms are such a cheery part of this build. The kids room is conveniently located near the toilets in this area, and it is so fun looking that you could probably forget you're in a bunker for a bit. 
Then the music room is right next door and that's everything. This build was a huge undertaking. So thank you for your patience with me taking so long getting this video to you. I really shouldn't have taken on such a big build right now, but I really love it. And it was so fun getting to use items from my new to me packs that it was worth it. It also seems like an amazing place for inspiring all sorts of gameplay ideas and challenges, and I hope y'all have a blast with it. If you do, please tell me all about your Sims Apocalypse adventures in the comments. And hey, if y'all like this a lot and have some great gameplay ideas, maybe I'll build up another lot on this doomsday island. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. I've got plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today and I'll see you next time.